Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Deborah Durst, and I am a double board certified physician that now specializes in anti-aging and regenerative medicine. As a return viewer of the channel, I want to thank you for always listening and being loyal. If you are new to the channel, then I hope you like the content we're putting out. If you do, please hit the like and subscribe and leave us comments on anything you might want to hear more about because we are willing to deep dive into anything sexual wellness or wellness. So welcome back to the Rev MD podcast. And today we are going to speak about a very, I guess, mystifying topic of squirting. So what it is, myths about it, things that are true about it, and yeah. kind of just go from there. So Dr. Durst, take the lead. What is squirting? <laughs> so, well, it's very controversial, right? And I think misunderstood. And a lot of people probably don't even know about it or have even heard about it. So, but I think if porn is at all something you watch, you see a lot about squirting. So on the other hand, it's made to be this big, you know, thing that women should do, right? Mm -hmm. um, but really, what is squirting? And we had to deep dive into that question as well. So, so when we're talking about squirting, you have to separate that from female ejaculation. So they're two and different things. And also from urination. Yes. So all very yeah. different. Yeah. Female ejaculation is really known to be a smaller quantity mm -hmm. and a thicker fluid. So just a small quantity. But for those bigger quantities of fluid and usually clear, that is what they considered squirting. And so really, what is that? Where is it coming from is the question. Yep. So and what gland is it that is um, activated in this? If we just think about fluid and and basically lubrication or fluid excreted during sex or arousal. So it can be dependent upon anatomy or arousal or orgasm. And vaginal lubrication is one. Mm -hmm. It could be urine, mm -hmm. you know, or you can have a female ejaculate from the skein's glands. And the skein's glands are just little periurethral glands. So when you're actually expelling anything from the skein's glands, it's coming through the urethra. Mm -hmm. So what else comes through the urethra? Urine. Urine. So you have a bladder and then you have the urethra that empties the bladder. And in women, it's very small, short. Mm -hmm. And so again, not a big distance between the bladder and the outside. So where it might, I guess, be able to be visualized is easier because yes. you're not taking urine all the way from the bladder out through a penis. Instead, it's going through the urethra, which is very short. So when you're actually doing a female ejaculation, you know, again, it's a small amount, but still coming out of the urethra. And still utilizing that skein's clear. The same exit um, from the body. Yes. So, and I think there was one study in 2015 that kind of broke it down a little more and we'll discuss it. When you're talking about squirting, and I don't even know that people have heard, a lot of people have heard about female ejaculation versus squirting. Because no, I think it all kind of just gets lumped together into one thing. Correct. I mean, and I really, if squirting is a relatively new terminology in my I world. I have been Googling too. it. I, it wasn't for this podcast. I know. <laughs> so it's relatively new and a difficult thing to understand. And I think the big question has always been, is it urine or is it something else? And I think the answer to that is really, it's urine. And because it's a larger volume, it's coming from the bladder and through the urethra. It doesn't mean that you are incontinent during it. It can be, again, other contractions that are happening that basically result in relaxation of that sphincter or, you know, that muscle that permits urine from coming out. And I think the thing that points that out is there's a study in 2015. It's not a large study, but it actually kind of goes and aligns with all the other studies basing it on the fact that it's still very similar to urine, but then the post squirting or analysis will show some PSA in it. But and that's that just where you means get the that you're still getting the skein's glands emission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. what brings us to the, you know, they call it the female prostate. Correct. And so, but if we look at that study, what was really cool about it, 2015, it was again, just seven women, but 
at the same time, how many times are you really going to actually get a woman, get to ultrasound her bladder, make her urinate, get her all aroused and close to orgasm and be able to do another ultrasound and then do an ultrasound analysis post-orgasm. And... So you're not going to get any large studies with it. And then an analysis it. of the fluid yeah, as well. so you get an analysis. So you got an ultrasound and you have a fluid analysis yep. and together. So they had all the women empty their bladders and they did an ultrasound post-bladder and all seven women had empty bladders. And then they get them aroused and they're aroused to the point of almost having an orgasm and what happens is that now their bladder is full on ultrasound and then post squirting their bladder is empty again so mm -hmm. to me something is happening to fill your bladder with that arousal and and then after the squirting episode and these were all women that mm -hmm. were squirting now their bladder is empty and so now what do they do the analysis of the fluid. Yeah. All and, I keep thinking about is how in the world did they market this and how did they find volunteers? Correct. Can you imagine? Yeah. Well, it I would think that there a... might be some break in between <laughs> exhibitionists. I don't know. Because you almost have a break. You have to have a break in like the point where you're getting to that an orgasm. You are able to take an ultrasound with them still in the process. Then being able to tell it that they're about me to orgasm of the, uh, and then... sexual response cycle with Masters yes, and Johnson right. when we talked about that study and how yeah. they got participants where they actually recorded them having sex and measuring their orgasm strengths and yeah. the cycle that happens. And so this is the first time since back when that study was going on that it, anything like that's really been discussed on this podcast. So I'll, yeah. I, I'm kind of stuck. Well, <laughs> like, I think, again, this comes down to the reason yeah. why we don't have many studies on the female sexual response. Well, because everything's it's, so taboo yeah, still. It's taboo and it's hard to <clears throat> study. So I think that even though that's a small study, the fact that they did an analysis, the ultrasound is pretty revealing, in Absolutely. my opinion, because you have an empty bladder. It's now full. And not a large period of time. So something happens during, and then you have an emptying after they squirt. And the analysis so, and the, analysis. the fluid, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And I think that, again, most of that analysis of the urine that was post or pre-squirting looked like urine. So mm -hmm. the things that they measured, like urea and creatinine in it, were the same. Yeah. as So the urinalysis and then the pre-squirting analysis yeah. was pretty much the same. And I think maybe one had like some PSA in it. Yeah, but it's and, and, Yeah. Um, and so PSA acid. is, again, a prostate-specific mm -hmm. antigen. And the skein's glands, which are producing our prosthetic equivalent for women to men. And so the prostate in man's skein's glands in women. When they did the post-squirt and they looked at the squirt, you know, fluid analysis most of that had PSA in it. And so there was something coming. So basically, the, it was still urine, but some PSA in it. So everything looked the same from the urinalysis, urea, creatinine, the, the measurements in urine versus the squirting was the same. The only thing that was different is some of the post-squirt and most of it had some PSA in it too. The so there's a contribution of that skein's gland to the squirting. So it's pretty revealing. It's kind of, can't argue. No, I mean, I think to me that makes the sense, right? The science is so, yeah. clear. It's night yeah. and day. There's really I, not much more to that. It's not a large study, but like the fluid is urine, but most of it post-squirting does have some PSA, which actually brings to another, there were a couple meta-analysis of squirting that again, we're just looking at mainly surveys of women. Mm -hmm. So most of our sexual, you know, research on women is related to surveys because you're asking except for the masters and johnson's yes and, and if you haven't seen masters and johnson podcast you need to go back and look it's at that mind it's blowing to think about what they did in that era of time yeah. and and how we wouldn't all, get away with it now but it was great information no and then and it's still the same model we use today all these yeah. years later yeah so when you look at the surveys and you look at squirting it literally will say again that there's a larger volume 
ejaculation and until 2011 in the one meta analysis like it really looked as if everything was considered female ejaculation but now that's kind of been separated out to mm-hmm. female ejaculation being a very small amount that's from the skin's glands and then a larger urinary expulsion is squirting does it mean yes. that somebody's incontinent it means that something's happening during that orgasmic phase that's making them release urine and so and not all women experience this i think it's important this isn't something that you should be doing that you're not doing or it it is not all women experience this. I think that's important to say that it's not something that I think that like, correct. I completely agree with you. Women don't know about it. It's not shameful if you are. Yeah. And I think there's the narrative that goes along with it. So basically the narrative is that if you think that it's urine, you know, or there's, then you're going to be shameful. Or if you think there's pressure on you to squirt, then it's going to be shameful. But if you don't really know, and it's shocking, then that's another scenario of what, what's really happening. Right. So, um, you're thinking about that instead of the orgasm, but what happened is that in one of those meta-analyses, they talked about penetrative squirting versus orgasmic. So there's a difference, right? A lot of these are surveys and there wasn't a lot of pathology that was reported with it. So it's not as if they're having incontinence that's mm-hmm. medically reported, but they're surveys. And so deep diving into that. So if somebody's having penetrative sex, they're getting older, they're not on hormones, and now all of a sudden they're having squirting, is that yeah. maybe an issue? So just deep diving into the cause, the change when the they started to experience it. Yeah. It. But it doesn't have to be with an orgasm. It could be with penetration, you know, or orgasm. So incontinence could play a role in, I think, just deep diving and to and getting the circumstances to help um, further sort through so that you could potentially address something that was underlying and going on. There's probably a different couple schools of thought, like it's either like men almost wanting that because it's been played up and yeah. pornography and then women feeling pressure for that and again there was that one article that we'll deep dive into in a future podcast that talks about again is it a superpower or a shame yeah. and i think that depends on a lot of those circumstances of, right the context in which things are occurring yeah correct so i think going into that like and finding out you know what women are thinking and that's what that survey is about so this is more in most of the controversy with squirting revolves around the fact like where is it coming from what is happening with it mm-hmm. and is it normal is it urine And I think that's been what everyone's been talking about. We haven't really talked about what do women think when this happens. So that's the next podcast. So the skein scan gland is on the anterior vaginal wall. Mm -hmm. So is the G spot. And anything that you read, did you see anything that they are one initiates the other or contributes to activation of one leading to the other or and anything was, like that? Well, there was a couple. So like there's a couple things. So it's really periurethral. So like the G spot, you know, more. Well, and again, the G spot is further back. Yeah. And the G spot being more of a G complex. Like what is that really? Is it yeah. part of the, you know, vaginal canal, the urethra? And the clitoris, like almost a UVC type of um, complex and not just spot, but more affiliated with the anterior vaginal wall and the periurethra is the skein's glands Mm -hmm. because they're releasing into the urethra, but they can't, it did talk about, again, as some, a woman gets aroused, it depends on the anatomy, depends on a woman's arousal and the physiology for that woman or pathophysiology that when they get excited, sometimes that can be an excitement of the skein's glands in addition to, to, yeah. So it can contribute to, but it's not a one or other. Yes. It doesn't I mean, have to play a role. Yeah, it doesn't have to play a role. You can actually, a lot of women were kind of shocked by it and didn't report orgasm with it at all. So, so that's interesting. Yeah. So it, I think that it's still complex. I think that... The thing that is not as complex in my mind after reading this is whether it's urine or not. doesn't mean that they're peeing. It means that there's a release of urine because the fluid analysis 
shows urine, but it shows some PSA with it, which is, again, coming from the skein's glands. Yes. So a contribution doesn't have to be every time, because even in that study when they ana analyzed it, it wasn't every time. I think there was like one that had squirting that had no PSA in it. Okay. And again, I think that there were almost all of them that didn't have PSA pre-squirt. And so it can happen at the same time that they get some from the skein's glands or it doesn't happen that every time that it's coming from the skein's glands, but it's definitely urine in origin, not in a bad way. They're not peeing. It's, it's not an involuntary release of and not a lot of pathologic conditions. Well, actually no path like really documented in the meta-analysis mm -hmm. that we did. You know, but again, I think if that's a new concept, it's happening when they're older, just deep diving. It still could be a new partner and a new sexual experience and oh, they're please. squirting for yeah. all the right reasons, you know, but also just making sure that there's nothing else that needs to be addressed and having I those conversations. I think that it's great that we're just at a point now in medicine that we can even do these analysis and look at that kind of stuff and I learn know. more about the women's body and the sexual response cycle and all the different ways to achieve pleasure as a female demystifying all the taboos uh, yes. yes or it, allowing women to talk more about it right so just opening the conversations i think is huge yes and that's the nice thing about again our practice is that we have these conversations with women all day long and so as i look at this in these surveys that happen it's a great opportunity for us to start asking more questions in a survey form to see what people, because again, they're coming to us for multiple different reasons. It could be like an IV or aesthetic and beautifying, you know, different age ranges, hormones, hormones sexual, sexual wellness. wellness, and to kind of across the board start to ask questions, you know, where it's a more um, anonymous way and they're just yeah. answering a survey. We well, can probably it. gather lots of information. The majority of the reason we do these podcasts are because of questions from patients. Yes, they do prompt a lot. They, yeah. they prompt a lot of them. Yes. And this was actually one of them, too. Yeah, so sure was. <laughs> You're welcome. So, I know. <laughs> so anyhow, so we want you to, um, you know, leave comments or questions because that's a lot of times also how we come up with uh, a uh, podcast topic. And again, like and subscribe, share with friends. And we're willing to deep dive into anything sexual wellness or wellness. So leave us topics you want to talk about.